Here is Sailor Alaska, a blue ink. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. As a blue, it's just too light for me to, in general, enjoy. I'm sure by the shorter video, you realize that the writing samples were just too light to effectively show on camera, so many of them are cut out. There is some color variation by pen, but only from the very wet pens and to just darken it up. And in, indeed it does shade and on most papers, it is against that light color. It just loses uh, its readability against the light color of paper as a background. But it does seem more usable on the 20 pound copy paper. So it is included here. It's just that I'm not going for it unless 20 pound copy paper is what I'm really writing on the most. All of the writing samples are done with a platinum 3776 with a soft fine nib that writes rather dry. A Hero 7035 with a fine nib that writes wet. A Visconti Van Gogh with a medium nib and an average flow. A Lamy All Star with a broad nib that writes average. The pen for today is a Noodler's Nib Creeper. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there with the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the soft fine nib, we can barely see it on the page, but it is there. There is no feathering and there is no spread. There is some shading that happens, which the good news about the shading is it does show us that the writing is really there. Now I'm looking up at my camera as I'm recording this and it's much more visible to me than it is on camera, though it, it gets lost in the white of the background and I, was not looking forward to the rest of the writing samples from this. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is a whole lot darker than it was with the soft fine. Thankfully, it's very readable here with no feathering, with no spread, with some shading that's going on. You really see it on your head, first line. The end of the Y in that downstroke gets quite a bit darker than the whole rest of the word. And on head, it starts much darker on the HE, lightens up at the A quite a bit, slight bit darker at the beginning of the D, so it is showing some shading, most usable right here. Looking at the medium nib, it is lighter than it was with the wet fine, darker than it was on or with the soft fine, no feathering, no spread. Yes, it shades, You, it's not nothing. Look at nothing on the first line where the NO is lighter than the TH and the ING at the end lighten up. But for me, while this is readable, and I think it stands on its own readable. It does manage a little bit. Maybe an off-white paper would do better for this, perhaps a cream, but then maybe it would adjust the tone of the paper or of the ink. Looking at the broad nib, it is just a t the tiniest bit lighter than it was on the medium. We have no feathering, we have no spread, we do have shading. I think the shading shows up better here than it did with any of the other nibs. You see it with down where the N is quite a bit darker than the rest of the word. They on the first line, the T is light, H is dark, E into the Y is light, downstroke of the Y gets very dark. Even bump right next to that starts light and works its way darker to the P. So it is shading and it is usable if you like these pale blue inks. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here's the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately seven milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is just a tad bit darker than it was with the Clairefontaine. There's no feathering and there's no spread. There is some shading. This is 
without a doubt for me unusable on this paper and this paper frequently will make an ink just a little bit darker than it is on the Clairefontaine but it is not helping it out here. Looking at the wet fine nib it is darker than it was with the soft fine same tone as the Clairefontaine it has no feathering it has no spread it does shade but I think the most important thing we're looking at here is that it is readable on the page without any kind of problem from a wet fine nib. Looking at the medium nib, it is lighter than it was with the wet fine, same tone as the Claire Fontaine. No feathering, no spread. It shades better than it did on the Claire Fontaine. If you take a look at thudding on the third line, where the T is light, the H gets darker. The U into the D lightens up. The first D is darker than the second D, and then the ing at the end gets darker again. Looking at the broad nib, it is the same tone as the medium, just a tiny bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It has no feathering, it has no spread, it has shading. Not quite as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine, but you can definitely see it. Take a look at the cross of the T in jostling on the first line, or the S in walls on the second line. Even the L at tunnel on the third line, there is some shading going on. Not a standout quality, and considering that it takes a little bit of effort to read as a full page, I am not happy. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting into water. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left, pen flush is on the top right, one third bleach solution is on the bottom left, and water is on the bottom right. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Ackerman, their number five, Shocking Blue. Here is Diamine Blue Pearl. Here is Krishna After Dark. Here is Noodler's Periwinkle. While it's nice to see ink in the same color family, I prefer to see ink to complement the color on the page. Here is Monteverde Rose Pink. Here is Sailor Manyo Yamabuki. Here is Roher and Klinger Document Magenta. Here is Pen BBS number 184. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the soft fine nib, it is darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine, much more readable than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It does have a tiny bit of feathering and a tiny bit of spread, but it's so light that it doesn't even matter here. Now there's a couple of moments of shading that happen. This is why I think the 20 pound copy paper is a good match for this ink. How horrible is that? There's a thing I thought I would never say. Looking at the wet fine nib, it is darker than it was with the soft fine, lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get feathering and we get spread. Neither of them are out of control or anything that would stop you from using it, even though there's a ton of feathering, most likely on the first line, you really do see it there. But because this ink is so light, it's not being a problem. Looking at the medium nib, it is a bit lighter than it was with the wet fine, lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine with no feather, no spread,
no shading. And I'm just saying no feather and no spread because it's so light. Yes, I could go and say his on the first line has a little feather. So it is of on the second line, but it's not affecting the readability of this ink in any way with it being so light. Looking at the broad nib, it is the same tone as it was with the medium, lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. Again, I'm going to call it as no feather and no spread because of how light the ink is, though technically they are still there. It's not affecting the readability because the readability itself is not great. I can see it. I can read all of this on this paper. It's just that it's really light. It looks just washed out. Looking at the back of the page, sure, the ink got deep into the paper. Nothing bled through touching the page underneath. Could you write back here? I don't think so, especially with the wet fine. I think enough of it was getting deep that if it's bleeding through and it's very light, the combination of those, just bad news. So what nib and pen do I think are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. The dry writing soft fine is the lightest tone and has some spots of shading, but is generally too light to be usable for me. The wet fine was the darkest and did shade, but still comes across as a lighter pale blue. Now the medium was lighter than the wet fine and can be usable. It even shades, but it makes me think that the pen is running out of ink. The broad is just a tad bit lighter than it was with the medium, but darker than the soft fine with very present shading. I feel this that the only way to go here is with a very wet pen, regardless of the nib size, to darken it up. But if you enjoy a soft pale blue, then the medium flow, medium or broad may be for you. I go for a very wet fine myself. I hope you got something out of this video and thanks for watching. I want to let you know that the best way you can support this or any channel is to let retailers know where you heard of something if you go to buy.